hey, Yum just released new custom colors in the Ned Dingers. This actually prompted me to make this video. If you're not catching big bass fishing a Ned rig, you're probably fishing in the wrong places. Today, I wanna to show you some real high percentage areas, go over times of year, and some special retrieves I've got. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through pre-spawn, all the way to late post-spawn, and a little bit early summer. So first of all, let's take a look at one of our maps here. So we have a big flat, we'll call it a main lake flat. This distance from the mainland out to here could be anything from 20 yards to 120 yards. This is irrelevant. What's important is you have to look for places on your lake with staging areas that lead up to these spawning flats. You're gonna find areas here where they're gonna hold and stage in the pre-spawn. So when they slide right up, they're in their spawning areas already. So remember, outside, at, outside ends of the points, staging. As they slide up, pre-spawn areas into the spawning flats. This is the first thing we're gonna look for. Then we're gonna try to find our rocks and rubble on the points. And now I want to talk about a retrieve that I have here. Okay, this retrieve is what I call a slow swim. This is important because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the lightest weight I can. I'm going to cast the net rig out. Knowing where my rocks are, I'm going to cast the net rig out. It's going to swim down to the bottom. It's going to make bottom contact. Bam, it's going to hit the rock. Then I'm going to slowly swim the bait until I hit another rock. It makes bottom contact. This is important because every time, every time the bait hits a rock, it's going to make a sound. And that's what's going to alert the bass if they don't see the bait. So I'm going to swim it back up over the rocks again. Bam, it makes a sound. And I'm going to swim it all the way down to the end of my rocks. And this is where you're going to pick up and cast again and you're gonna make multiple casts on these rock piles in several different angles because you may find that one angle might get you bites where another angle doesn't. Now, let's go into early summer. So early summer, we, we have the same situation. We have a point, it's got rocks on it. Um, the bass are sliding out. This is a good early summer pattern, late post spawn, early summer. The fish are gravitating towards their summer hangouts now. So once you get into summer, they start to look for structural elements that are not connected to the mainland. Remember, this is connected to the mainland. This is not connected to the mainland. So this is where your fish are gonna start to gravitate into the summer. And this translates on spotted bass lakes, smallmouth fisheries, largemouth fisheries, anywhere you have a lake or a reservoir that does not have grass in it. So now here, let's talk about another retrieve. This is called snapping or stroking the net rig. So now remember earlier, I said we want to use a light net head float it down there and swim it over the rocks. Now we're going to use a heavy head. And the reason being is we're going to use a snap technique. So we cast the bait out to the beginning of the rock base. It'll sink much faster because it's a heavier head. It literally slams into the rock now. Bam, it, bam, it slams right into the rock. Then you take the rod tip and you stroke it straight up in the air. It shoots the net head off the bottom and then you let it fall back down on a controlled slack line because a lot of your bites are going to come as it's falling. So you let it fall back down on a, on a controlled slack line. As soon as it slams the rocks again, swim it about a foot and snap it back up. This gives the appeal of something fleeing away from the bass. And because bass are predators, that motion could elicit strikes from neutral or non-feeding fish just because of their predatory instinct. Again, you cast it out, hits the bottom, snap it up, let it fall, it, it hits the bottom again, swim it a foot, snap it back up, let it fall. Very aggressive way to fish a Ned Rig, but it gets bites, it gets big bites. Now, I wanna transition into grass lakes. So remember, we covered structure, we have two retrieves, the slow swim, 
and the snap or stroking method. Now we're gonna cover grass lakes. So here's what you're gonna experience in most typical grass lakes. You've got a lot of vegetation. So we're gonna pick high percentage areas in that vegetation or around the vegetation. So the first thing I'm gonna look for is sharp inside swings on points or fingers that stick out, sharp inside swings, very high percentage spot. Then I'm going to look at broken grass. In other words, where you see mats of grass and then you start to see grass that's broken up. Broken grass, broken grass is a good place to start. And then of course, the outside end of the point and if, especially if it has rocks. Rocks on the outside edges of grass are absolutely key bass holding areas. And I don't care if it's a spotted bass, a large mouth, or a small mouth. They want the isolated rocks on the outside edge of the grass. So our next high percentage area is a slow swing where you might have a hard grass edge, a slow tapering break line with hard bottom or rock on it. Now, something that a lot of people overlook is a gradual tapering edge where it just gradually tapers down. The reason those are good is because now your grass has stair steps to it. So here, let's do something else. Let me go to a different, different map. So this will illustrate it perfectly where you have your tight grass vegetation shallower. The key thing to look for here, two types of vegetations together. You will have coontail, for example, and maybe cabbage grass right next to each other. Anytime you have two or more types of vegetation together is a super high percentage area. Then, we're, of course, we're gonna know, because we, we already graphed this and we looked, there's isolated rock piles in between the grasses. And then as we get a little bit deeper, you're gonna notice that you're probably gonna start to see milfoil. Milfoil is a bass magnet. And if the milfoil is isolated, it's even better. So what are we gonna do here retrieve-wise? Because you're like, holy crud, there's grass. I gotta throw this thing in the grass. Well, you got options. One thing is, Yum makes a nice weedless uh, net head with a little weed guard on it, which works really well. Remember though, when you're fishing grass, you want the absolute lightest, lightest possible net head you can throw. Here's why. Because we're gonna throw it up here and the net's gonna fall. It's gonna actually lay right on top of the grass. And you're just gonna slither it down and over the grass and you're gonna work it up and down in between the stalks of vegetation. Now, not necessarily letting it go through the bottom like if you were punching or using a heavy slip sinker. You want this thing just to be gliding over the tops of the grass. As soon as you come to the open spot, now you're gonna let this bait go all the way to the bottom, right on the hard bottom or the rocks. That's why you use the lightest way possible because now we have the ability to float that bait over the tippy top of the grass fingers. That's how you're gonna get bites on this. This retrieve I call feathering. Real lightweight, you're slowly feathering it over the tops of the grass so you can feel the bait touching the grass, but it's not heavy enough where it wants to bury down in the grass. It literally stays on top of the grass. This is a very, very important technique on any lakes that have vegetation in them. Hey, this information will improve your net game. Go to LureNet.com, check out the new Ned Dinger colors today.